fly high and the sirens start to rain. Ain't nobody worrying when the kids die young and the mothers are suffering. Ain't nobody praying when they kneel down low on the After all that I've been through, I don't regret a thing, no. And sisters, I understand your pain when that selfish motherfucker who existed for only momentary elation abused your body and your soul, making you feel ashamed. And sending your life spiraling into a bottomless pit of insecurity and degradation. And sister, I understand those acid-filled tears you shed seemingly the only reparation for all the bullshit you forged your fake smile and muster through. Stop pretending to be content and let go of the perpetration. And baby girls, Someone is listening when you voice the fact that you said, uh-uh, I don't want to, and that nigga still made you. Mama ain't hearing you cause she's squaring and too hot, when in actuality you're not. Your fruit was just picked way before your time immorally by someone you trust who twist their views of love because they lack the maturity. And my brothers, I understand you're hurt. When you bust your ass on Jim Crow's clock and try to support your family but it doesn't seem to work, so you give it that nine to five struggling to start hustling and make your ends meet. Poor foes locking you down because they're in the hood of little ballers and society sees it as one less nigga on the streets. And my brothers, I understand your heartache even though you detest sharing tears because you think real men don't cry. Gave your heart and soul to that female while she used you, then discarded you for another with a little more financial back and cheated continuously with several other guys. And every time that picture enters your head, you're feeling enraged and like someone needs to die. It's okay to cry. My daddy said it's true. You gotta purge and release the anger before it becomes the end of you. No need to throw your life away for sending someone who wasn't worthy of your time to ill fates. Cause killing her and any one of those dudes you caught up with will only catch you a free case. And I know I'm not certified to be a psychologist, but my experience in Mr. Plissett and this shit makes me a qualified therapist. You see, there is a big difference between wading pools and lakes, between realists and fakes, so release them floodgates. Yeah. Let some of that torment off the soul while I attempt to help you heal your ills as I let the ink flow. If you haven't heard nothing but one thing I said, let it be this because my message rings true. The ink I spilled on hundreds of tablets are your tears, and my people, I'll proudly shed them for you. Patiently I waited. Patiently I waited for a call back to a phone call that I placed to you that I expected you to respond to. That ring back that doesn't lack emotions cause that's what I gave you so I expected that you could give me some too. But instead you freeze. You freeze frame this very moment and all I hear is them loud ass ticks from my digital clock and the steady pace of the way I breathe and absolutely nothing else as I wait for my cell phone to ring and so it does and instantly I'm buzzed. Buzzed like I've been choking on two blunts to that cryptochronologic and I've been trying to make sense of the senseless waiting by the phone and so I try to insert reason to my logic. I waited because I have nothing but absolute love for you. That plus the fact that you and I have an unspoken chemistry and the passion's hot too. That's why when time after time we fell into each other's embrace, we just kind of let it do what it do. Not taking the time to be protected because we both felt protected by each other. Our sexual histories were both clean, so we had no reason to even consider infecting one another. But what we didn't take the time to consider, while in the throes of passion, you and I could possibly be becoming father and mother. And now, two months have come and gone, and I feel like Otis Redding sitting by the dock of the bay waiting for this damn period to come, and yet it doesn't. And the realism of the situation is taking a hold of me and shooking me like a Catholic priest tries to shake a demon in an exorcism and it's got me bugging. Bugging out cause I've been alone for so long that I don't even think I possess the sentimentality that you need to raise a seed and it scares me. My mental acceptance of loving something that I created just to have it taken away from me truly terrifies me and time after time I'm rationalizing the fear by hearing your comforting voice whisper at the nape of my neck to my inner ear, baby, you're not alone. And so I continue to take this massive manhood that you thrust within my temple the rest of the night long until you washed up and went home. And then I waited, found myself waiting all alone, waiting for that cell phone to ring to hear that familiar phrase that I've heard on all too many occasions. Peace, queen, you at home. And I was, cause for you I damn near drop anything. All you had to do was ask me.
me. But now lately, since this period hasn't been visiting, neither have you and I called you up on a Tuesday. Frantic about the situation with doubt and insecurity in my tone, leaving a voicemail too. Explaining the perplexity of the situation and asking my one star number soon what in the hell should I do? Because though worldly and knowledgeable on subjects from accolades to zephyrs when it came to this baby thing, I had no clue. But see you, you never called. You never took the courtesy to give me a ring back and now slightly apprehensive about the whole situation I reminisced on the love we made and wondered if it was just sex and if it was did you wish you could take it all back. You said you praised in my temple. While your body was physically in poetry venues, you were still in my bedroom in your mental. But now I'm having a hard time believing that. All because I'm having some conniption like bitch fear from possibly being pregnant from too many unconscious decisions on both my parts of your one star righteous oh, ass won't even call me back. Yeah. And now I got you on my line and I'm wondering, brother, what's up with that? I mean, I guess if I would have submitted to your request and given you a door key, I wouldn't even have to ask. But I didn't. And now here we both are, potential parents at the crossroads of life, needed to make a decision on the outcome of this bastard seed. Because quite honestly, frankly, the fact that you didn't have the courtesy to call me back after the dollar has me wondering if you even the right mo for me. I feel like such a fucking fool and I angrily exert wrong fucking number, fool, and I slam the cell phone shut and wait. Now not so patiently for a call back from a call that I placed on a Tuesday to you. Thank you.